Yeah, hey, you're fired. You did a terrible job today. Get off the farm. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you guys know, we've had a demo of this JCB Teleskid for well over a month now. It's seen many jobs on this farm, all kinds of things, pushing dirt, lifting fuel tanks, uh, moving crates, moving all kinds of things, cars. I mean, it's just done just about everything that we would do with a machine like that. And it's even pushed grain around in a Quonset building. It's been an amazing machine, and it's kind of brought a new perspective as to what this size of machine is capable of. Right now, I just want to go through and let's do a little comparison between these two machines and just go over the things I like and don't like. So before we begin talking about the two machines, I just want to say a disclaimer that this is a 2003 John Deere. It had like 6,000 hours on it when we bought it. This is like a 2018, 2019 Teleskid with had six hours on it when we bought it. A lot has changed in those years. They're two different manufacturers. One has capabilities, the other one can't even come close to doing that. But horsepower wise, they're very similar. Lift capacity, they're very similar. Top speed, they're very similar. Size, they're very similar. Weight, they're very similar. And this is the only comparison I have to compare the Teleskid to because my only experience with skid steers is I had a little bit of time, like 20 minutes in a case a lot of years ago. And I don't even know what model number that was. And then we used to have a new Holland on the farm. It was old, it was thrashed. They had an old Wisconsin four cylinder gas engine in it that didn't run very good. Yeah, it was ready to be retired. First things first, let's go over the old machine. This is a 2003 John Deere, 270, two-speed skid steer. I like the tires on this thing. It's got real big tires. We put new ones on there. They're pretty grippy. Really didn't know what we wanted to get into. We were more or less shopping for the price. We were looking at new Hollands, like the 180s, I believe what they're called. And at the time, Bobcats even. And when this thing popped up, the price was right. I think we got it for like just over $12,000. And you just can't get these machines. They're just worth a lot of money. They retain their value. And even though it had a lot of hours on it, we were willing to take the risk knowing that we could probably fix it. But for that price, it seemed worth it. And honestly, it's been. We had to put new tires on it. We did have one hydraulic drive motor go out, uh, and that was expensive. But overall, it's been a good machine. It's done everything on this farm, literally everything. We use this machine from just, just about anything you can possibly think of. And we stuck these forks all over the place, lifted things that this thing should not even try to lift. That's just typically what you do on a farm is you put machines to their max. And it's been used to its max. It's never been tipped over, but it's gotten close. It's lifted some massive rocks, and it's pushed a lot of vehicles around that did have batteries or were dead. It's even carried the back end of a pickup a uh, quarter mile to the farm because the tire fell off. This machine's great, and I didn't really know any better, but first and foremost is the entry. You have to get in the front of this machine, and that means climb it over the bucket, whatever attachment you have on the front. You have a step right here. You gotta pull this lever right here, or turn the handle, and it's spring or uh, shock absorber, so it's got struts that lift it up. That is nice. But once you're inside, it's a brute to pull down. We have to oil these bearings, and they they last for a while. It used to be able when it's really old, you grab back here and you could slide it down. But without grabbing and one handing it, it's hard to hard to shut. And once inside, it's pretty tight in here. You can't hardly get the windows to open and close. There is a guard barrier. This is just, I think, some kind of screen to protect stuff from hitting you in case the window breaks. And this machine also is hard starting in the cold. It does not like winter. We have to keep it inside. It has glow plugs. It even has ether injection. And if you don't do it right, it just won't start. We've changed starters, we've changed batteries. I don't know if there's something we're missing, but it's just a hard starting machine. But once it's started, it runs great. Like right here. It's definitely loud, especially the hydraulics. The hydraulics are, are really loud. You can hear that? I've got the brake on, but that's the sound you hear when you're running this thing around. And the controls wise are pretty standard. They're just two levers with bucket control right here. And bucket tilt right here. 
And there are foot pedals. If you have some attachments you want to put on, like a, a snow blower or a jackhammer or whatever might go on that requires extra hydraulics. We never use that. I think we've used a jackhammer once with this thing. We didn't, we rented it, we don't own one. But AC doesn't work in it. And uh, the heater kind of works and the fan barely blows. Other than that, it's it's a tight fit in here and it's a bugger getting in and out. Um, it's honestly a pretty stable machine. It's also pretty fast with that two speed. I don't know what its top speed is, but I bet it's somewhere around 11 miles an hour. One thing I really like about this machine is the controls for finessing. If you're doing like a really fine movement and you're carefully using the forks to grab something or a bucket or teetering or whatever you're doing, you can just finely, finely, finely tune the controls because there's no electronics with these controls. It's not fly-by-wire or drive-by-wire or control-by-wire. You pull that lever and it's linkage going down to actual valves opening and closing the hydraulic fluid to the cylinders. And that allows the operator to have really precise control of what he's doing. That's one thing I'm gonna to touch on this teleskid that is a negative in my opinion and that we're dealing with. The quick disconnect, there is no quick disconnect. So like if I were to change this, I'd have to drive up to a spot where I want it, unhook these two, drop the forks, back, climb back inside, put the parking brake back on, put the seatbelt back on, drive back, drive over to the bucket, drive up, hook it on, take seatbelt off, put the parking brake on, climb out, put the levers down, lock the bucket on, then climb back inside, put the seatbelt back on, undo the parking brake, and then I'm good to go. Teleskid on here, much nicer system. So much nicer. And a lot of times, these things don't latch properly. They, they grab the, I don't know if the attachment's not on right. You have to have someone out there stomping on it with a bar trying to unlatch them. They're a pain. But it works. And that's the thing is we didn't know better. The reach on this thing is pretty good. It goes pretty high. It's, it's overall a pretty nice machine. Let's raise this real quick. Here is the disadvantage of this machine on a safety standpoint. Front facing door, I gotta climb out. There is a lock that I can do in here and I can lock the cylinder up so hopefully they won't fall. But right now, as you can see, that baby's above me and I gotta climb out underneath that. So right now I'm doing what is a big no-no. I didn't engage the safety lock because I don't think it works. But you gotta climb out and there's quite a bit of weight sitting there. Plus I have nothing on it, but sometimes, and I'll be the first to admit I've done it, climbed out with a load on that thing up in the air. Sometimes you gotta get out to do something and you don't have time and well, that's how people die. That's a negative, definitely. So let's take a step over to the Teleskid. I'll show you what this is all about. Now, first up, this has smaller tires on it. I was told the reason why the tires aren't as bulky as say ours on that one over there is to, for clearance issues with the Teleskid boom. If you're digging in a, a low spot, you can do that. Well, they need room so they can't put bigger tires on there. Now, if you have tracks, the tracks can be fine because they can be small in the front, track comes up big in the back. This is not a track unit. We opted for a tire unit because that's what we know, though a track would've been fun to try. For comparison purposes for us, it was better to have a tired machine because, or wheeled machine, because that just fits what we've been used to. Here is the first thing right up front, guys. First thing, side door opening. That right there is almost a deal breaker for me. Safety aspect, this is, this is a, a design that saves lives. Look how wide this opens. I can just climb right in. So easy, there's a step, sit brown, get in a nice comfy seat, boom. Boom, I'm in, ready to go. Close the door, got a handle. Perfect. Simple, gotta get out, raise the safety latch. That's basically your seatbelt. There is still a seatbelt, definitely wear it, but you can. that's uh, just a, basically a lever saying that, hey, I'm in the seat, I'm ready to go. Open the door, climb out. Now a big guy might have a little bit of issue between the space between here and here. It's a little tight, but it's 10 times easier than climbing out of that cab. This is also the largest cab on the market. It's huge. I did not realize how big this cab was until I ran it for a while and then got in this thing and I was like, whoa, I feel like I'm in claustrophobic mode here. That thing is tight. A lot of room in this cab. Definitely a nice thing. Here's my complaint though about this side door, okay? It's shock absorber, so when you open it, it swings out on its own. Very convenient, except you gotta be make sure you're not parked next to a vehicle or a building or something here because look how far out this swings. See that? That probably sticks out about four feet, three or four feet. When I first got this thing, I parked it right up next to this skid steer. I opened the door and I let go thinking like, oh, it's gonna move a little bit. It started swinging out and almost slammed into the side of that, that skid steer over there. And I mean, there's the window stops right here, but if a metal piece would've stuck out, I might've shattered that window right there <laughs> under the first 30 seconds of having the machine on our farm in a demo. And this here has already bumped into a couple things opening and closing that door. So here's the thing, it's a trade-off. 
they have to have the door open like that. They can't have a fold up door on the side because that would be weird. I guess they could do like a DeLorean style. <laughs> the side door, I understand why they have to do this because this gives you the room to climb in and out. It's just something you got to think about when you're running this machine. Don't park next to something on your driver's side, your left side. Make sure you have enough room for that door to open because it's probably going to hit whatever you're next to if you're not careful. Now, I love the door that it has a slideable window right here. And we use this thing quite a bit. There was multiple times I was in here driving and I'd pull up and Scott wanted to say something to me. And rather than having to open the door or that slide front door on this skid steer, I could just slide the window and be like, yeah, Scott, no, I'm going to go over there. Yeah, hey, you're fired. You did a terrible job today. Get off the farm. Anyways, cool thing. Definitely like that. The other thing I've heard, and I didn't have it happen, but we live in very windy country here. Wind blows hard. I've heard, be very careful when you open this door up in the wind. It's like a giant sail. And if that wind catches that door, I can only imagine it would just rip this shock off and break that strap. Maybe not. I, I don't want to be the stress tester of this machine. I know JCB has put these things through their tests, but that's a little concerning to me. That brings us to the main thing as to why. Why do they have this side door entry and how can they have the side door entry? Well, that is a telescoping boom. It's the one arm system. Most skid steers, bobcats, whatever you want to call them, have a two arm system. But who says you can't engineer something to be a little different? Well, JCB stepped up and said, we can do it. So they built a one arm system and they engineered it pretty stout. There's some massive pins on there. You can look up all the stats online. I'm not going to rattle them all off for you. But this thing actually has, I think, four to 600 pound more lift capacity than that John Deere and it only has one cylinder underneath there. This telescoping boom, it's built pretty solid. I was a little skeptical about it. I was thinking to myself, it's got a flex. If you got the bucket on here and you're trying to pick up something on this end, that whole thing's gonna try to twist a little bit. That was what I was thinking. We picked up some heavy units and I watched carefully. There was no twist, there was no flex. It always just went straight up, straight down, no problem. Even extended out in the air, bouncing around with weight on it. It just never once did I feel like it wasn't solid. The cab, on the other hand though, is slightly offset if you notice. It is a little different, but honestly, unless you're told that it's offset, you would never know. Here's a complaint about this telescoping boom though. And then we ran into this one time and it was, could have been a little sketchy. The visibility is terrible when this boom is up a little bit off the ground. It blocks your whole vision right here. Cause look how thick this is. They have to make this thing pretty massive to support the weight all in one arm and the cylinders in there. There's a lot of stuff there. And there was one time where I was working alongside my brother, he was operating it and he was driving up and I should have been stepped further away. That was my mistake. But I was walking up there and all of a sudden he turned to the right. And only thing that stopped him from basically clipping me with these forks was he saw my feet on the ground, but he could see my whole body and he felt terrible. And I said, you know what? I gotta be careful. I gotta stand further away from this thing. Yes, there is visibility blocked on this skid steer over here to the 270, but it's so much less. It's like probably half the thickness of that boom that you still can see things on your side, your left or right, your, your, your peripheral vision can still pick up if someone's standing there. Now, on the flip side, this side over here, <laughs> look at that visibility. I mean, come on, look how much visibility I have right here. This cab is, is huge, the windows are big. Right here, not so much. Let's turn it on. Let me raise the boom up here and show you. There we go. So say I'm carrying something, that's about the height right there. Got a pallet on the front of this thing, driving around. This right here is blocking your vision. He saw my feet right down here when I was standing there. That's one big complaint I have. And it's, it's, a, it's a complaint that I'm not saying JCB did something wrong because how else are they supposed to engineer this system? It's just how the cookie crumbled in the situation, but visibility, absolutely wonderful on this side. Visibility on this side, when the bucket's up a little bit, not so good. When it's down all the way, a lot of visibility. So if you're just driving around, you've got it down to the ground, not a problem at all, really good. If you got it way up in the air, ton of visibility. I mean, a ton of visibility. But 90% of your operating is gonna be with this thing probably right there. Now that I'm inside, I've got it running. Let's go ahead and just show you some of the controls, some of the features that I like and don't like about it. So this system has two joysticks on it. It's an ISO system, so it's it's ran through an ISO bus. It's basically all electronics. It's, it's drive by wire, control by wire, if you want to call it. There's no linkage to the actual hydraulic valves other than the electronics going to them. It's hot in here. I'm gonna turn the AC up as I'm sweating, as you guys can tell. Oh. That right there is awesome. That old skid steer over there did have AC in it, I believe, but it doesn't work. Having AC in this cab, oh, it's humid out. I'm not used to humidity. This is nice. That AC is beautiful. It has a nice radio up here. I haven't even hardly turned it on. I just am so used to not having a radio in a, in a skid steer, teleskid, whatever you want to call it. 
that I just don't even use it because I'm used to being so loud that I literally, with that thing, I wear earplugs when I run it because the sound from those hydraulic motors on the ground reverberates up through the floor and just deafens your ears. But this thing, the hydraulics on it are so quiet. I mean, look at this. There's no all that kind of sound. It's quiet. I don't know what they've done to engineer the, the hydrostatic drive on this thing, but it's honestly, just the fact that you feel it moving, you wouldn't even know it's going because it's so quiet. The only thing I hear is the engine, which I have this awesome foot throttle down here. At first I didn't use it. I was sticking to the dial throttle there. And I was like, why am I using this? I have a foot throttle. And once I got in the habit of using that foot throttle to drive this thing, oh man, I wish that skid steer over there had a foot throttle. It is awesome. Now let's go for a spin here. Here's the tricky part, guys. And I don't know how How Farms Work did it. He maybe had a suction cup, but Ryan, you figured it out how to mount the camera in here. I use magnets to mount my cameras. There's not a lot of surfaces in here I can stick my magnet to. So I just hold the camera between my knees, just clip my knees together and kind of hold it. That's about the best I've found. So I might not have some sweet driving, but I can figure something out. So now I'm going full speed right now. This is the high speed. This is a two speed system. And I believe full speed is somewhere close to 13 miles an hour which is probably at least a mile, if not two mile an hour faster than that John Deere that we have. It's fast. And that's a big complaint for us is slow skid steers is we've got a couple farmyards spread around that are a few miles apart. And sometimes you don't want to load the skid steer up on a trailer just to take it two miles. So you road it. Well, if you're roading this fast, I mean, look at this. I'm, I'm not going very, this, this, this is going faster than our series one big bud does. It's a little bumpy, but that's to be expected in these things. There's no suspension. There's a really narrow wheelbase. So you're, you're bound to have bumpiness. A little bit of squeal when you're in the high range. Other than that, very smooth, very fluid. Um, just feels very tight. To change between high speed and low speed, it's just a button on my finger down here. Just tap it and it just, whoop, there we go. So that's pretty much driving around. The teleskid option on this side, or telescoping boom, I should say. All that is is just a rocker switch here. Really simple, pull it towards yourself, comes in, push it forward, goes out, love it. We use that thing a lot. Again, two points of this teleskid that just absolutely set the bar for everybody else would be the telescoping boom. You use it a lot, a lot more than you think you would. And the side entry door, just awesome. Now let's lift this thing up in the air with it fully extended. Okay, let's get out of this. Now right here is where that telescoping boom shines. It's an eight foot extension and compared to this, it just, it just isn't comparable. I was able to get in the top of, of truck beds that that struggled to. There's just a lot of times I know we would be using this. If you're roofing a building, I mean, that can almost lift up on top of your roof to put shingles up there. It's just a lot of places where I could see that option being so convenient and so nice. Love it. Now they do have a safety lock here. You can take this red piece off, put it on the cylinder right here in case you do need to keep this lock up there when you're working around here. There's your window washing fluid right here. There also is, I forgot to mention on the back, a valve right here. So for some reason you need to let that boom down. Oh yeah, look at that, see? It's an emergency release of the hydraulics. So if you need to drop the boom down for whatever reason, you can do that without having to start the engine. I think this skid steer over here also has that. I just never used it, but it is very accessible back here. Definitely nice. Now, if you'd like to see some of the things we did with this telescoping boom, make sure you click up on the card. It's gonna pop up right now. It'll take you to one of the videos. You can see us running it and lifting some big tanks. Pretty awesome, some tires. So yeah, check that video out if you haven't seen it already. So I didn't explore it all, but there's like auto leveling features where you can use for grading off, say sand or dirt as you're leveling the platform off. You can use the bucket. It'll put the bucket as float mode to Put a nice grade down. There's the ability to slow the hydraulics down, speed them up so not so touchy. That is one complaint that we did have running this teleskid was the controls, they were a little touchy. Like we put those LSW 1400 tires on that combine. They're pretty heavy. They're like almost 3000 pounds. It was borderline almost the max lift of this machine. And I would carefully, carefully pull back on it, carefully pull back, carefully pull back. And then all of a sudden you go And there it is modes you can select to change the sensitivity of the controls. I just don't think we did it right because when I selected the modes, it didn't seem to change the sensitivity. I know there's a way to do it. So it was operator error there, 
not tele teleskid or a JCB's problem. And to remove the attachment on the teleskid, all you've got is this but two buttons right here. There's unlock and lock. Just hold the unlock button. This little red plunger pops up right here. Tells you that it's disengaged. Drop the bucket down, back up, disengaged. And then to re-engage it, drive up to your attachment. You can do one-handed. There we go. Raise up the bucket, grab it, and then hold the lock button. And that plunger drops down, disappears, tells you that the attachment is locked. Really simple, no climbing out. Much nicer than that one. If you're in the market to look for a machine and you want a little bit of a forklift, a little bit of a skid steer, a little bit of a telehandler, I think you should take a look at one of these, honestly. It's kind of a jack of all trades and a master of definitely some. We love it. Honestly, I, I have very, 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 very little things I can say about that John Deere skid steer that I like better than this teleskid. There really isn't. I mean, honestly, besides maybe a little just the finessing with the hydraulic controls, but the maintenance on this one, a lot less grease points. It's just simpler, easy access, safety. I mean, the safety is huge. Just a few things though, as an operator that you have to kind of get aware of running the teleskid. And once you've got some time under your belt, you ran it a little bit, it becomes fluid, becomes like second nature. Now, is this teleskid gonna stay on our farm? Is it something that we're gonna buy at this point in time? I will say no, it will not. Reason being is, it's an expensive machine. I'm not gonna lie, it's expensive. These things go for a lot of money. They're not necessarily that far out of the ballpark though of all the other competitors because I've looked up the prices for Bobcats, for Cases, for New Hollands, for John Deere's. They all are expensive. It's just amazing what this size of machine is going for these days. So we have purchases right now on this farm that we've got to take priority on. And that's buildings, grain bins, maybe upgrade our air drills at some point in time, hydraulics on our tractors. Uh, you know, we just bought combines. We've got payments on those. We're just not in a place where we can justify jumping into that machine when we already have this machine that is doing everything we needed to do just not nearly as awesome and as safe as that machine. But I do want to give a lot of thanks to JCB for this opportunity to run this. I don't know what other people think about these as far as complaining, thoughts, dislikes. These are just things that I picked up on as I went through this video today. But JCB, you built quite a machine there. That teleskid is, is awesome. And I, I really wish we could keep it on the farm. I really do. And maybe someday when we go to retire that machine, I can guarantee you <laughs> The first thing we're gonna type in when we start looking for a new machine this size is gonna be a teleskid. We're gonna be looking. I wanna also give a shout out to Torgerson's. Torgerson's are a local dealership in the area. They are primarily our case dealership, but they're also a JCB teleskid dealership. Well, I should say all of JCB products, a lot of them. But Torgerson's has been very good to us. In fact, they could have come and taken this machine a lot sooner and they left it with us and said, no, you guys keep running it. Take your time, use it as you need. Very thankful, Torgersons. You guys have been great to us. We, we appreciate your service. And um, I'm gonna be really sad to hand this off to you guys and let it go. But there's another person lined up that gets to use it. And I hope they get as awesome experience out as we have because it's been a fun ride. So with all that said, guys, it is gonna be sad seeing it go. So guys, thanks for watching the channel. If you like it, definitely subscribe. If you like some of the other videos, go watch them. But you don't know until you go watch them, so go watch them. And Make sure guys, you leave a comment below. Tell us which one you like best. Tell me what skid steer, what bobcat, what model you're running right now. I'm curious. And I wanna know what is the machine that you guys prefer. I might even put a pull up too, but if you're out looking for a machine, stop by a JCB dealership somewhere and, and take a peek at them. I'm sure they'd love to get let you run around the lot for a little bit, give it a spin. They're, they're worth looking into, they really are. I think it's a machine that once you get into, you'll, you'll just never regret buying. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. There's a lot coming. Harvest is right around the corner. It's gonna get crazy. It's gonna be awesome. The videos are gonna be awesome. There's gonna be just some big things happening. Stick with us and uh, God bless. Catch you later.